Welcome back to the channel. I am Joe and a video a few weeks ago uh, that I talked about the stalling and check engine light craziness going on with my GX. I talked briefly about removing the factory charcoal air filter thing uh, in the air box and I told you I was going to show you guys how to remove that if you wanted to. This week I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. It doesn't take very long so stay tuned. All right, real briefly, this is the charcoal air filter pre-post because it actually comes after the air filter. Um, they come in a lot of Toyotas, GX. Uh, my Forerunner had one. Um, essentially, this is to stop gas fumes to, from coming back out of the engine when the engine is turned off and therefore possibly causing a fire. I've never heard of any other vehicle having one of these. Um, and then after I cleaned mine, thinking um, possibly it was contributing to the issues that I was having, uh, a subscriber that I trust and talk with quite regularly said they had removed theirs with no ill effect um, and that I should just get rid of it. So I figured it's, it's actually a pretty dense filter um, and restricts airflow. So I figured if it's not gonna hurt anything, all it can do is possibly help my fuel mileage. I've been running rich codes, uh, which means I possibly am lacking in the air delivery department. So maybe this could be a factor. Also, a dirty one of these can help can affect how your MAF uh, sensor reads. So went ahead and completely discarded it, and it's been as far as that. Uh, I don't think I've had any ill effects from removing this. If anything, I think maybe my fuel mileage has gone up in contribution to all the other parts that I've added uh, over the last month. But let's jump into the air box and show you guys uh, real quick how to remove this if you are so inclined to do so on your rig. Now again, this is uh, super simple. I'm gonna show how to do it. On Mine is an 07 GX 470. I know this engine is shared between the Sequoias and Land Cruisers and Forerunners and Tundras and also the four liter engines had this on the fourth gen. I don't know about the other vehicles uh, in the Toyota lineup around the you know early, mid, late 2000s. Anyway, uh, I'm assuming the process is very similar. Uh, first of all, you're going to unclip all four of these clips. There's two in the front, two in the back. Um, I would probably recommend unplugging your MAF sensor, unscrewing it, uh, gingerly taking it out and setting it aside someplace safe because they can be fragile. Um, you're going to undo your hose clamp there and then you can remove this entire air box. Now this just is mounted in the air box and um, if we can zoom in a little bit you'll see here there are one, two, three, four, five, six little what are now holes. They used to be plastic rivets. It basically was um, melted into place. I just used a small drill bit and drilled out those plastic pieces and popped it out. Now, after I did that, I did go back uh, around the air box and kind of trimmed any excessive plastic um, pieces that were just kind of hanging on there with a razor blade. I didn't want any, one of those pieces to come off and then go into the engine because remember, we are after the uh, air filter at this point. Um, but yeah, it's as easy as that. Did I notice any intake sound, uh, induction sound difference? No. Um, do, did it increase fuel economy? Don't know, because I've replaced so many things on this, like I said, in the last month. I can only assume that, yes, this, like I said, this is a pretty dense, um, again, it's another air filter um, restricting or, you know, at least slowing down airflow. Um, and my concern with the, the fact that maybe this, these engines are tuned to deal with the air, uh, you know, airflow and air pressure past this um, and removing it would be an issue doesn't seem to be uh, playing a factor whatsoever. Again, like I said, pretty easy. Uh, do it at your own risk, whatever. Be sure to, you know, you don't have any uh, plastic pieces in there that are going to fall off. Now, for all of you guys that would flame me and anyone else for doing is in the comments um, for reasons of Toyota and Lexus designed that engine to run with that. They wouldn't put it in there if it didn't need to be in there. I understand, I'm with you. I did not remove it for that reason in my fourth gen uh, four liter forerunner um, because I just, you know, I'll leave well enough alone. But the fact that I've had so many issues recently with trying to figure out why this thing has been dying and throwing uh, engine codes, kind of at my wits end and figured I could take it out 
and if it seemed to be running poorly for not having it, you can always put it back in. It doesn't have to be glued into place or, you know, plastic welded into place. You can always put it back in. And if you want to wash it, um, and you do want to actually use it, um, really to, to wash it really well, you need to do that anyway to pull it back out. So, again, if you're gonna flame us in the comments, back it up with some information. We're all here to learn. I'd love to know some actual facts on why you shouldn't do that if in fact you should not do that. So anyway, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, turn the notifications on. We're dropping videos every Sunday. Lots of car nerdy DIY stuff uh, in the garage, usually off-road based type things. Unfortunately, for the last several weeks uh, has been dominated basically trying to figure out why this thing um, has been having issues stalling and throwing uh, check engine lights. Um, check all those previous videos too. Follow the links in the description down below or to my Instagram and my Facebook where I post all this stuff but much more frequently and I also post all of my like personal day-to-day -day life stuff uh, as well. Not just off-road stuff. I'm trying to get some mountain bike stuff back on the channel uh, and some camping stuff. Hopefully if uh, we ever get a chance to do some camping. Been very busy uh, here at home with the family and it has been very hot. So we have a camping, or we have, it's not a camping trip, we have a trip coming up. We're going to Michigan. Uh, probably hit you guys up for some info on that uh, in the next week or so. Um, some input there and uh, hopefully the GX will just be, be running flawlessly 100% of the time by that. Anyway, uh, until next week's video, thank you for watching, take care, goodbye.